Hi guys, are you ready for our new lesson? Today we are going to discuss graphing circular function. And to start with, okay, we are going to show the graph of the sine function. Okay, what would be our learning competency to be able to graph sine function showing the amplitude, the period, and then of course the phase shift? Let's define some terms. We have here the period, which means goes from one peak to the next or from any point to the next matching point. Okay, bear in mind that for us to determine the period, we have the formula 2 pi over b. Okay, such that our, uh, let's say if 0 is said to be less than the absolute value of b, your graph is stretched horizontally. On the other hand, if the absolute value of b is greater than 1, the graph shrunk horizontally. Okay. Now, what if we have the word amplitude? It is referred to as the height from the center line to the peak or the, the trough. Or simply, we can measure the height from the highest and then, of course, the lowest point divided by 2. Bear in mind also that when our absolute value of A is less than 1, the graph shrunk vertically. And on the other hand, when your absolute value of A is greater than 1, the graph is stretched vertically. Okay. The next term we have here is the word phase shift. Phase shift is referred to as how far the function is shifted horizontally from the usual position. You notice here, okay, from the original function, shifted, it's either to the left or to the right. The next term here is the word vertical shift. Shows how far the function is shifted vertically from the usual position. So from the original position, shifted vertically, it's either upward or downward. Okay. Now, we have here the standard form of the equation of the sine function. Y equals A sine quantity B quantity X plus C plus D. Where A stands for the amplitude. And then of course, for us to compute for the period, 2 pi over B, that is for B. And then of course, for C is the phase shift. And lastly, D refers to now your vertical shift. Okay, so there you have it, guys. Now, bear in mind also that this uh, sine function is said to be periodic function. Now, when we say periodic function, it is a function such that f of x is um, equals to f quantity x plus np. For every real number in the domain of f, every integer n, and some positive real number p wherein the smallest possible value of p is period of the function. Okay. Now, we have here the diagram. Uh, when we see periodic function again, we could repeat the given period symmetrically. It's either on uh, going to the right or going to the left. And that is infinitely. Okay. So, that is the word periodic function. It could be repeated. It has a pattern. Okay, let's show the graph now of the original function, which is y equals sine x. Okay, here are our steps for us to be able to show the graph of y equals sine x. The first one is to be able to identify the value of our a and b. So our a here, we all know that it's 1. The numerical coefficient of sine is 1. So simply our amplitude is 1. So that's why we have a positive or negative 1. Then, of course, our b is 1 also. So, from our formula of the period 2 pi over b, b is 1. So, simply, we have 2 pi. So, one period of this given function is simply 2 pi. And then, of course, the second step is we are going to divide this period into four equal parts. So, 2 pi divided by 2 is simply pi this pi divided by 2 for this part is pi over 2. And of course, the third interval here is simply add the first and second pi over 2 plus pi is simply we have 3 pi over 2. Okay, so there you have it, the, def, uh, the four intervals. And then of course, we are now ready to identify the maximum point and then the minimum point. We all know and bear in mind that the sine function is always starts from the origin and it first move upward. So that is now our maximum, which is pi over 2, 1. 
there you have it okay and then downward and the lowest point here is your minimum point which is 3 pi over 2 negative 1 okay afterwards we are now ready to identify also our intercepts okay starting from the origin okay we have 0 0 then of course this 1 pi 0 and lastly we have 2 pi 0 after plot plotting our uh, points and intervals okay we could now connect and draw a smooth curve so there you have it guys our graph of sine function okay now what if this time we're going to apply uh, phase shift okay so our example here is y equals 3 sine 4x oh by the way it has now an amplitude and it has now already the value of b okay so from our steps again identify our values of a which is 3 and that 3 now is equals to our amplitude our b there is 4 from our formula of the period which is 2 pi over b substitute b with 4 so 2 pi over 4 and simply pi over 2 this pi over 2 guys being referred to as our one period of 3 sine 4x there you have it afterwards this pi over 2 is to be divided into four equal parts with these four equal parts divided by 2 pi over 4 with this pi over 4 divided by 2 is simply pi over 8 and this of course the third interval simply add the first and then the second pi over 8 and pi over 4 is simply 3 pi over 8 okay the next step is we are going to determine of course the maximum points of uh, maximum point is simply pi over 8 3 okay there you have it guys and then downward your minimum point is 3 pi over 8 negative 3 considering this time our intercepts from our intercepts is starting from what yes from the origin followed by we have pi over 4 0 and then of course lastly we have pi over 2 0 so there you have it guys our uh, working pattern for the graph connect now and of course have a smooth curve so there you have it our graph of our function y equals 3 sine 4x okay now let's compare okay and show the graph of this we have y equals sine x y equals 3 sine 4x we have y equals 3 sine 4 quantity x minus 2 and then lastly we have y equals 3 sine 4 quantity x minus 2 plus 5 okay now we are going to show the graph of these four functions and compare okay guys now our first one is to show the graph of our y equals sine x okay so there you have it guys and as you notice it is already repeated from our period so that it extends um, infinitely from left to the right okay the next one is going to show y equals 3 sine 4x okay so there you have it guys and again the amplitude starting from uh, of course the amplitude is 3 okay now what if this time it was being shifted horizontally okay 2 units so negative 2 so that means to the right so there you have it guys okay and then of course what if it is shifted vertically we have y equals 3 sine 4 quantity x minus 2 plus 5 so meaning how would we show this one okay from our original a function which is y equals 3 sine 4 x okay that means it shifted 5 units from 3 so I have 1 2 3 4 5 so it shifted 5 units okay so if we would want to identify the highest point or the maximum point of uh, y equals 3 sine 4 quantity x minus 2 plus 5 
our highest point here is simply we have yes that's right eight is the maximum um, amplitude of uh, coordinate of that okay and of course systematically also uh, if it's negative which this for example this is negative it would move downward okay on the other hand on the horizontal shift if this is positive it would move to the left and if it's negative it would move to the, uh, the right okay so there you have it guys as we compare our um, different graph okay so after that guys um, you we are now ready to consider of course our uh, summary of what we have discussed today okay as we sum up the first one is amplitude again what is an amplitude it refers to the height from the center line to the peak okay or simply the height of our curve okay then we have also the word period um, this is referred to our from one peak to the next so meaning uh, we could copy uh, the pattern then extending to the left and to the right then we have also the phase shift it's either moving what horizontally or vertically and of course what are our steps in graphing sine function bear in mind we're going to determine the values of our a and b c and d okay and then of course after computing our uh, period bear in mind also that we're going to divide uh, the period into four equal parts and then that interval now will serve now as different points considering the maximum point the minimum point and of course our different intercepts after you have plotted that one, you are now ready to connect and draw a smooth curve. Okay? And then, of course, uh, you could extend or copy the pattern it, uh, infinitely from the left to the right. Okay, guys? So, hoping um, you, have, um, you have learned something from our um, discussion. And, um, of course, see you again on our next lesson okay bye guys